Let's give this panorama image a dreamy glowing style using only Lightroom for the editing. As always, you can follow along by downloading this panorama image from the link in the description of the video. And now let's jump into it. In order to make this image glow, first we need to adjust the exposure. So let's open up the basic panel right away, change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape, which will already make the darkest parts of the image a little bit brighter, plus it will also boost the base saturation. The whole image is super dark and usually that glow only comes with brighter areas. So what we want to do first is to bring up the exposure, setting up the base image for the glow effect. Raising the exposure will not only make the shadows brighter, it will also make the highlights brighter. In this case, we have a super blown out sky, but don't worry, we can easily fix that by bringing down the highlights. And right at this point, we have some nice visible details in the sky. Of course, the area around the sun will be blown out. I don't think it's a big deal in this case. Bringing down the highlights will also reduce the overall contrast. That's not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, to add a dreamy glowing style, less contrast is actually quite helpful. I will show this in the next step because in the basic panel, there are three very important sliders when it comes to glow. We have the shadows, the blacks and dehaze. Now I'm going to bring up the shadows. Again, we will lose contrast as we make the darkest areas of the image brighter. But at the same time, this creates a very soft looking image and thus we're kind of creating the illusion of glow. So let's bring it up a notch like this. I don't want to overdo it with the shadows because I'm going to bring up the blacks quite a lot. So let's raise the blacks. I'm going rather high for this image, but I think this looks really, really good. Another benefit of raising the blacks, of course, is we are going to fix any clipping that was present in the darkest parts of the image. So now that we have adjusted the exposure, let's compare the two images real quick. On the left, and that's what we have started with. And on the right, you can see the image after just a bunch of basic adjustments. And overall, of course, we have less contrast, but you can already kind of see the glowing effect start to kick in thanks to the brighter shadows. Let's continue. Of course, I want this image to have some sharp details. I'm going to use the texture and bring it up. We have the clarity and dehaze. We can use both of them to introduce a heavier glow effect. That means I can use negative clarity, which will make the whole image quite a bit softer. In this case, I don't really like what this does to the image. In fact, I want to introduce some clarity to push the midtones contrast a bit. But for the glow effect, what I'm doing every time is to use negative dehaze because this slider works like magic. So let's bring it down. You can see, again, we are losing contrast, but at the same time, as we go further down, the glow effect will become more and more intense. We just need to be careful because negative dehaze will also brighten up the brightest areas of this image. And of course, we don't want to introduce any clipping in these areas. Now, this is a little bit too much of this effect. So I'm going to tone it down a bit. I just want to have a subtle hint of glow. So I'm going with something right around minus 10. This is looking perfect. Now what I'm going to do as well is to bring up the vibrance and I'm going to bring up the saturation to make the colors pop. Awesome. Now the only thing left to do in the basic tab is to adjust the white balance settings. I want this image to be a little bit warmer so I'm going to bring up the temperature notch introducing some more of that golden light. Perfect. Now let's see image after the basic adjustments. Again let's compare to before. And this image almost looks done by just using basic adjustments and we have a very nice and soft looking glow effect applied on top. And we didn't even use any masking at this point, but we want to change that. So let's go ahead, open up the masking panel. Right away, what I want to do is to change the sky on the right side. I'm going to use a color range mask with which I'm going to click somewhere here in the blue part of the sky. We are getting a pretty good selection for that. I'm going to subtract a linear gradient because I only want to change the top right of the sky. So I'm taking out everything else. Now with that selection, I'm going to simply bring down the exposure, making that area darker and thus just introducing a little more contrast in that area. I'm also going to bring down the blacks further, making this part of the sky darker. And I'm also going to bring down the saturation notch because I don't want the blue tones to be that prominent. All right. Next up, let's create a new mask and I'm using a select landscape mask. Let's click on it. 
I find this new landscape mask to be super helpful if you want to select bodies of water like in this case. You see we have a bunch of different options here. I just want to use the water right here. So let's click on it and choose create mask. And with the mask set up, what I want to do to the water is to add more contrast and make it a little bit darker to make it look more natural. So I'm going to start by bringing down the exposure. And then let's bring up the contrast. And what always works great on reflections like these is to bring up the clarity. All right, perfect. Then I'm using a linear gradient with which I'm going to cover the bottom left edge of the image like this. Because this area is a little bit too bright and it's taking away attention from the center part. Now I don't want to affect this piece of wood right here in the center. So I'm going to subtract and let's to select subject. And now to make it darker, all I need to do is to bring down the exposure. Really careful to not introduce any clipping in the darkest parts. But I think right at this point looks pretty good. Nice. Now I also want to work on that thing in the center. I'm going to use a select objects mask here. Always make sure to use the rectangle select mode because this will give you better results in my experience. And I'm going to draw a rectangle around that piece of wood. You see, we get a decent selection, not perfect, but good enough for this purpose. What I'm going to do is to bring up the whites, making this thing stand out a little more. I'm also going to bring up the temperature, giving it a warmer look, and I'm adding some texture making it look sharper perfect finally let's work a little more on that glow effect i'm going to create a radial gradient i'm going to make it nice and big like this i'm going to rotate it because i want to fit the angle of that slope in the back and now i'm going to place the center over the sun basically the brightest spot of the image and i'm also making sure this radial gradient is overlapping some darker areas right here in the foreground and to do this i'm going to bring up the blacks Again, we are lessening the contrast as this will make the darkest areas within this mask brighter. But again, as a result, we get this more intense glow effect. I'm also going to use negative dehaze again to make this effect stronger. So let's bring it down like this. Again, we are also making the highlights brighter, which is a problem, but we can fix it by bringing down the highlights slider a bit. Okay, that's looking great. Now, if you want, you can add a little bit of color using the temperature slider, making that glow effect look a little bit warmer this way. Wonderful. Now, let me deactivate this single radial gradient to see what this does. That's without, and here we have the glow effect applied on top. Looking much, much better. Now, there's one more mask I want to use. Let's create another color range mask, and I'm clicking somewhere in the bright green tones in the trees on the right side. That's looking like a good selection. Let's subtract a linear gradient. I just want to target the brighter trees right here on the right side. I'm also going to subtract the foreground. This shouldn't be selected. All right, then let's see. I want these trees to have brighter highlights. So I want to brighten them up. And therefore I'm going to very carefully bring up the exposure. And I'm also going to bring up the clarity, which should make them pop a little more. Wonderful. And that's it for the masking adjustments. Let me deactivate all the masks so we can get a better idea of what we have done. That's the image after the basic adjustments. And here we have the image after the masking adjustments applied. Looks much cleaner. Now let's do a bit of color grading. As always, let me start in the color mixer tab and I want to work on the saturation first. This image has three main colors which are very important and I want to boost yellow, green and blue. So let's start with yellow, bring it up a notch. Let's also bring up green and let's even bring up the blue tones a bit. Wonderful. Then I'm also going to head into the luminance tab. Here we can Kind of work on the contrast a little more i want to bring up the yellow luminance which will make the foreground a bit brighter giving us more contrast this way and at the same time i'm going to bring down the blue luminance which will make the sky darker and again we just get some more contrast out of this okay nice then we also want to do some split toning in the color grading tab for this image i'm using the highlights and the midtones with which i'm going to boost the warmer colors of the image because with split tone we can add specific colors to the highlights the midtones and the shadows so let's start with the highlights i'm going to choose a warm color tone right around here 
And let's bring up the saturation just a little bit, introducing some more warmth to the highlights. Okay, that's looking good. And I do think I also want to play around with the luminance. What this will do, it will make the highlights brighter or darker, depending on what we do with the luminance slider. I want to make them brighter, so I'm going to increase the luminance for the highlights. And by doing this, I'm just introducing more contrast. And I'm also going to pay close attention to the Instagram because we don't want to have any clipping in the highlights. Let's go into the midtones. Again, I'm using a warm color tone, so set up the hue and bring up the saturation a bit. Again, I want to work with the luminance. This time for more contrast, I'm going to bring down the luminance, which will make the midtones darker, just like that. Let me turn off the split toning for a second so you can see the difference from before to after. Very subtle change, but it really helps with these glowing, dreamy golden tones. Next up, I'm going to head into the calibration panel. And as always, just the thing that I always do for my images is to bring down the blue primary hue because I just like what it does to the colors. And I'm also going to bring up the saturation. I'm going to raise it a lot because I really like these strong color tones for this image. and. That's it for the color grading. Now, the only thing left to do, of course, we want to sharpen this image. So let's open up the details panel and I'm going to drop the radius all the way down, increase the details all the way up. Of course, we're also going to apply some masking while holding down the all key. So this way we can nicely sharpen only the important areas. And then let's bring up the amount of sharpening and we are done editing this image with this dreamy glowing look. So I hope you can find some use for this technique. Let me know what you think about it. If it was helpful for you, feel free to support this channel by subscribing, liking and maybe commenting. Thank you very much for watching this video and see you all next time.